All right, <clears throat> I have a iPhone XS 10s Max right here with a torn face ID flex, and uh, these are always a little bit tricky because uh, sometimes, well, especially with water damage, um, sometimes even if you transfer to the flood illuminator. So the flood illuminator is this thing, and this is the only. It's this little square box thing on the air speaker that that's the only thing that's really required for the, the face ID to work right because it's got a some sort of EEPROM chip in there um, that is serialized that is paired with the with the phone all right so everything else on this air speaker flex is not really required for the uh, face ID to work so all we really have to do is transfer this flood illuminator over to a new flex and uh, it should work uh, but from my experience, it doesn't always work, which makes it a little more challenging. But the, the actual removal process of this thing is, is not horrible, you know. So replacing it is, is you know, it's not a it's not a bad it's not a time consuming process. So and even if it doesn't work, you know, there's not a whole lot of time lost on it. So uh, so that's what we're going to try to do on the, in this case, okay? And I'm going to kind of show you all the different temperatures that I use and all that stuff in order to uh, to do this. And hopefully you guys can do it yourself later on. Let me see if I can get this thing focused, though. All right, I'll be back. I need to get a flex. Well, the first thing we want to do is uh, I just use mobile centrics flexes. Um, I'm not sure if they actually matter or not. Sometimes maybe the OEM works. I'm not really sure. I, like I said, it's been kind of hit or miss. So, um, anyways, the first step is to take the old flex off, or I mean, take the flood illuminator off, the new flex off. And it looks like this is actually an OAM flex because some of the um, mobile centrics flexes, this little thing is actually not really attached. It's just like taped on. And this one looks like it's actually soldered on. So this looks like an original flex. So hopefully this will work. So what I normally do is I I go to uh, actually let me check my notes here. I'm pretty sure it's like 285 degrees Celsius. Two hundred fifty. So I I go to two hundred fifty degrees Celsius with an airflow of fifteen. And this is my quick eight sixty one DW. Uh, could be very different for you. My standard airflow and temperature is like four hundred and forty. So I mean, it could like I said, it could very well be very very different for you. Okay. So just don't go based on what I what I'm saying. Uh, you can kind of experiment on your own. So. I like to uh, I like to do the back of it. So basically, if you can you can see the flow illuminators on this side. I just like to kind of heat the back of it at a very low airflow, and just uh, and then as soon as it melts, so 250 degrees Celsius with airflow of 15. All right. So as soon as it melts, it's just going to pop right off. And I don't put any flux on it because I don't know. I feel like maybe sometimes the flux so it just pops right off. See that? No problemo. Because um, sometimes I put flux on it and it like, I don't know, it doesn't work. I'd say a lot of times. I don't know if that's just coincidence or what, but uh, I just don't flux it. Or very little flux. Because it is kind of some sort of sensor, so I don't, you know, maybe the flux kind of damage it somehow. Who knows. Anyway, so this is the original flex now, and I'm going to take the flood illuminator off this thing and, and, and transfer it. And make sure you, like, separate the flood illuminator, because sometimes, like, the flood illuminator will blow off and then be like, oh, which one's the original, which one's the, the, the uh, fake one, or the aftermarket one, you know. So same thing, 250 degrees, let's see if I can go down like this, 250 degrees Celsius with airflow of 15, heat the back of it, this is the original flex. And maybe like 20 seconds or something like that. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, maybe like 20 seconds now. Looks like the original flex take a little longer. Huh. 
This one's taking a little bit longer than the last one for some reason. There it goes. All right, so that's the original flex. Um, you can kind of touch that up a little bit if you want. Uh, just just make sure, just be gentle with it. You don't want to put too much solder on it either. So I'm just gonna stick like a little dabble of uh, flux on it, just a little bit. That's way too much right there. I'm just gonna go like that. Oh, okay, just like that. So I'm just gonna kind of touch this up a little bit. Let me. You really just don't want any cold joints, you know. Try not to get any flux on the front side. Don't put any more whatever than you need. And then I'm just gonna like even IPA I feel like is like a little too much for this damn thing, so I'm just gonna dabble of IPA and just cut see if I can wipe the old flux off. Sorry, I had a phone call later. So this is the original, it's pretty clean. Uh let's see, what are we doing now? Okay, so we need to put this back on the mobile centrix flex. And hopefully it sticks. Should be fine. So here's the mobile centrix flex. Um now we're gonna flip it around. Yeah, I'm just gonna be a little more careful with it. I'm gonna put a little tape on it. Just to hold it in place. Okay. Oh my, that's a little bit of something. My hair or something. Disgusting. Okay, so just put a little bit of flux again and let's just touch this up just to make sure. There you go. That should be enough. I don't want to put too much. Maybe a little more. That might be a little too much. See, I don't know if that was supposed to be touching or not. <laughs> Dang it. Is that supposed to be touching? Hmm. Okay, let me just make sure that that was supposed to be touching because I do not want that thing touching, otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, so it's supposed to be like this, so it'd be like top left. So let's take a look. Well, that does, that says it's not supposed to be touching, so did I just mess that up somehow? Oh no. I don't know what's going on. Is it supposed to be touching or not touching? Who knows? I guess we can what we can do is just look at the Oh, maybe it is supposed to be touching. Let's take a look at the old flex. Yeah, they are. Okay.
that's fine. Okay, so a little bit of flux on it. Uh, let's put a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Okay, that should be good. There's just enough flux on there. And we're just going to go 250 and 30, uh, 15 again, sorry. And then I'm just going to kind of... There it goes, and then I'm just going to kind of, there you go, you can kind of see it, and then I wiggle it a little bit. You definitely don't want to put it on there for too long, because then that little EEPROM might melt on the inside. So, okay, so now let's see if it works, alright? I'm not going to clean it, because uh, I don't want the IPA to soil the uh, inside of whatever sensor that is, the blood eliminator sensor, okay? So let's see if it works now. Hopefully it does. So this is actually a different phone, but uh, I did get it to work. Um, the guy that sent us, oops, the guy that sent us these phones sent us two of them, and basically both both of the flexes were torn right at the at the connector. Um, so one thing I've learned about these face ID repairs is that if it says like move higher, move lower, it's it's usually not the flood illuminator. So transferring it over is probably not going to work. Um, usually it only works when you immediately get a, a face ID is not working or not act, can't be activated or something like that as soon as you uh, start the phone up. Okay. Um, and, you know, just make sure you check with the customer that it was working before they tore it. You know, if they tore it, then I think there's a good chance that you can just transfer it over and, and all is good. Um couple of notes is use low heat, low airflow, 250 degrees Celsius and 15 airflow is what I use. And um, let's see, don't use a lot of flux or isopropyl alcohol because I feel like sometimes that damages it. I'm not really sure, but you know, just from my experience, um, it's, it's not good to use too much flux. Um, what else? Oh, uh, the flexes, the flex cables. Um, I, it's been hit or miss in terms of which ones work, which ones don't. Uh, let me see if I can bring one out real quick. So here's a here's a mobile Centrix one, okay? And I, I did get it to work one time, you know, but... So the mobile Centrix ones, the stupid... I think, I guess it's the ambient light sensor. It's really just... It doesn't even exist, actually. It's, you can just... You know, it's taped on here. It's just for cosmetic purposes. So it, there's actually no, you know... There's no ambient light sensor on it, and I got it to work once on these flexes that didn't have the ambient light sensor, like that was already on the flex. Uh, but I haven't gotten it to work since then, and I actually used, tried to do this one on this on this phone right here, and it did not work. So I think um, if you can get an OEM flex, that's probably your best your best bet. Transferring transferring the flood illuminator from a to a new to an OEM flex seems to work the best. Okay, so now I'm gonna just go ahead and test it real quick, and I'll show you guys that it did work indeed. There you go. Face ID is now set up. So. It did work, uh, and I just did it twice. So it, it is possible. Um, you just have to recognize some of the symptoms and some of the ones that you can't repair. Okay, so that's it. If it's water damage, it's hit or miss. If it's the flex is cut, very, 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 very doable. All right, thanks for watching this. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So 
options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone and and that's kind of what started this journey well fast forward three years later um, we have a website now microsoldering.com and we also have an online training course um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your micro soldering journey um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts and uh, the first part we just kind of go over all of the basics and tools how to use diode mode um, and what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that the second part we talk a little bit about ZXW tools and in the third part we go over four of the most common repairs Update this should be four common so it's basically no touch, no backlight, no power, and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, and then the last part is data recovery, no boot, and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery. So if you want to buy it, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then you'll come to this. Um, this uh, page right here. Just click on Buy at Udemy, and that'll take you to Udemy, where our course is hosted. Um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not. And right now, it's we're at four and a half hours, and we're adding to it um, as much as we can. So uh, just make sure you go through our website. Otherwise, the cost is a little bit higher. All right. Thanks for watching.